Dartmoor is southern England's last wilderness. It lies wholly within Devon, bounded by Plymouth and Tavistock to the west and Exeter in the east. The only town of significance to the north is Oakhampton, but there are several small towns to the south that include Ashburton, Buckfastley and Ivybridge. Easy to reach, it is bounded between two major expressways and the Great Western Railway from London to Penzance hugs its southern flank. Much of Dartmoor's population consists of wild ponies roaming free, rounded up annually for a pony drift each autumn. That cottage villages are scattered over the area and include Widdicombe in the Moor, and who knows, one of its residents might be a grey mare to quote the popular song. Covering 368 square miles, Dartmoor was created a national park in 1951. Its characteristic feature are granite tors, like Hator, rising above the bleak and barren bogs that cover the forbidding heart of this moor. Immortalised in The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Hound Tor is reputedly the location that inspired the legend about the Baskervilles that formed the background to the book. These tours were formed 350 million years ago, now weathered into fantastic forms by frost, wind and rain. For reference, use Ordnance Survey Explorer Map OL28. It covers almost the entire national park in great detail useful for touring and essential for walkers, appropriately clad of course in warm clothing as the weather can be unkind and change suddenly. High on a remote moorland you will discover the Ten Commandments set in stone, but fortunately unlike Moses we don't have to take them down the hill. They were carved into the rocks on the summit of Buckland Beacon nearly 100 years ago in 1928 on the instructions of the Lord of the Manor and took five weeks to complete. The extensive views are impressive. St. Peter's Church at Buckland in the Moor is less than a mile away. Pop inside and marvel at its 14th century screen, but first Look carefully at its clock. What does it say? Again, the work of the Lord of Buckland Manor, William Whiteley, erected in 1931 to the memory of his mother. It was possible to arrive at Buckfast Lee by train, a name incidentally comprising half the alphabet, each letter is different. I wonder if you can make up another place name with the remaining 13 letters. Closed in 1962, this branch line out of Totnes is now a heritage railway that follows the River Dart. It was opened on 5th of April 1969 by Dr. Richard Beeching, who of course is better known for his ill-famed report. The route of the South Devon Railway is just over six miles and run by volunteers, the perfect escape for reliving our past during the glorious days of steam. Most of Dartmoor's villages are around its perimeter, and on its eastern side include North Bovey and Lusley. Overlooked by Trendlemere Down, Lusley too was served by a railway, but that closed in 1957 before the Beeching Axe. Thatched cottages still border a sloping village green, the church of St. John the Baptist being the focal point. Continuing our journey north, we stop briefly at 
Oakhampton to admire its castle. It dates back to the Norman conquest, but now a ruin set in parkland with magnificent trees. Heading south down the western side of Dartmoor towards Tavistock, we come to one of the most surprising and eye-catching features on the moor, Grentor Church, perched high on its rocky crag. The structure of St. Michael's, founded in the 12th century, is thought to be 14th century. Its location is symbolic, and although no longer held, attending a funeral up here must have been a struggle for all concerned, and may be an act of repentance. Most visitors today arrive out of curiosity, where it is best to be dressed and shod for a moorland walk rather than a church visit. The views over the Tamar Valley and into Cornwall are wide-ranging and worth the effort. The church is not far from Tavistock, a market town on the River Tavy, from which it derives its name. It is also the birthplace of St Francis Drake. Not far and on the edge of Dartmoor is the Garden House, its history closely linked with nearby Buckland Abbey and today run by a charitable trust. Whilst a visit at most times of the year is recommended, springtime possesses a special magic. We return to the heart of Dartmoor for our finale. Tin was mined on Dartmoor from medieval times until the 20th century, and evidence of this activity can still be seen at Golden Dagger Mine, a name supposedly derived from the discovery of a bronze dagger in a nearby cairn. It can be accessed from Warren House Inn, off the B3212 to Morton Hampstead, and involves a short moorland walk. On the way from Tavistock you pass Post Bridge, best known for its fine example of an ancient clapper bridge dating back to the 13th century, allowing pack horses to cross the river, taking tin to Tavistock. Central Dartmoor is the exclusive preserve of the walker that is outside the Oakhampton Range, which is a training ground for the military. It is therefore out of bounds and only accessible at certain times, which can be checked on the web. There is much to enjoy and savour elsewhere. As mentioned earlier, Dartmoor is at times best known for a hound and a grey mare. Instead, I take you into the heart of the moor, perhaps unknown for some, but I will still go to Widdicombe. On several occasions, I stayed near Hay Tor, not far from Bovy Tracy, and this experience enabled me to explore the local area in depth, often taking fellow photographers to these amazing places. Hay Tor is deservedly popular, but I enjoyed the valuable luxury of arriving before the crowds and to witness a golden dawn. Hator rocks are an obvious magnet, which I often explored, but going a little further I soon discovered Smallicum Rocks and Black Hill, ending up on Hound Tor. On one occasion I stumbled across a field of bluebells, and from Bonehill Down, not far away, St Pancras Church at Widdicombe in the Moor was the focal point for my photo. An abiding memory of Dartmoor, that image in the mind's eye, are the Tors, and in particular its rocks shaped by weather. Rocks carved by nature are found in other parts of the UK, but on Dartmoor not only are they profuse, they cover a wide area. 
This is the image of Dartmoor that has become imprinted into my memory, remaining there long after I return home.